Today we're going to look at a Pioneer CT-07D. This is a double cassette deck that was put out under the Pioneer Elite brand. But before we get into that, we're going to look at some really slow lights in my shop. I thought it might be kind of neat to watch this old school uh, CFL startup under cold starting conditions. Notice how it starts at the end and it will gradually warm up. And this takes a couple minutes. This isn't the only one that's doing it. I've got six others above me that are also doing the same thing. But they're not quite as slow as this one. Now it's only about two degrees here Celsius in the workshop. In fact, it is too because I'm looking at the uh, temperature gauge beside me here. But as you can see, this thing really takes its time to warm up. This is one of the reasons that compact fluorescents were hated by so many people. It's because so many of them took this amount of time to warm up. And it'll do the same. It starts out very dim just the edges of the tube this is because the mercury when it cools down it solidifies it goes to a low point in the tube and it actually has to be heated up and as the mercury starts to heat up and starts to build pressure you'll see it starting to wind through the actual coils in the glass And now on to today's video. I have here a Pioneer CT-07D. This is one of the Pioneer Elite series. It's a dual cassette deck, dual auto reverse. And as you can see, both of these decks, deck one, record and play, deck two, record and play. And this one has a problem. Okay, first things first, let's see if this thing even plays. So let's turn on the power. This unit is 20 years old. It was manufactured in uh, 1997. I don't know the history of it, so I don't know even if it works or what it does, but it appears to have power. It looks like the cassette mechanism's open and closed, which is a good thing. It's got a tape here with some tone on it I hear no sound hmm. take a look at some of the settings in the front here I see a light that says digital what we got here? Okay, we have levels. We have a mic level. We have a record level. Okay. Reverse mode. Dolby Digital In. Okay, this got digital input on it. Hmm, interesting. I don't hear anything from that deck. Let's just try the other deck. See whether it has any tone on it. No tone. Okay, so we're not getting any sound. Let's pop the top off this thing. So there's a look down at the deck from the top. As you can see, there's a lot going on in this deck here because, well, everything's all, everything's all controlled. There's a cam that opens and closes. 
the decks here. We know that the decks are working, but we have no sound. And because we have no sound, I have to think something maybe in the power supply and one of the regulators isn't working or something is uh, not working. Now this has got digital audio as well because it can actually take, as you notice here, it can take a coaxial digital input right from a CD player and do the digital to analog conversion to record onto a cassette, which would give you pretty darn good recording quality. But I have to think that something common, because both channels are dead, both decks are dead, there's no sound, it has to be something, I'm thinking, in one of the regulators is not working, and we're not getting any power at all to the audio circuit. So let's start checking for voltages. Okay, if you guys can see the meter behind me here. Here's my voltmeter. We're just going to check for some voltages. There's a couple of regulators down here I'm going to check first. Okay, 24 volts there. Zero. And oh, that's low. I think that should be, there should be voltage there. That's, that might be the problem right there. Let's check this other one here. 24 volts. Zero. And 12. But that one's only showing, like, there's 24 volts going in. There's nothing on the output. Isn't that strange? Hmm. What is that thing? Is that another 12 volt regulator? Let's take a closer look at it. Both of those look like 7812s to me. That should be 12 volts coming out of that thing. Damn, this could be another easy repair. It'd be great because I got this tape deck given to me. If it's only a, a 12 volt regulator that's bad, that's like winning the lottery. This is a real nice tape deck. And, uh, you know, this thing would fetch a few bucks if I were to put it up on the market to sell it. But it might not be the regulator, it might be a connection on this little board down here. Let's just take a look and see. So here's the the 24 volts going in, which is there. There's only 0.9 volts coming out. So I think this regulator is probably toast. Let me see if I can find a 12 volt regulator. That might be a tall order though. I don't know that I've got a three terminal 12 volt regulator. I'm gonna have to go through my scrap pile of gear and see whether I've got one. But that might be all that's wrong with this thing. So the regulator will just lift it out. As you can see, they mounted them on wires so they could separate them from the board itself. This is to give it a good heat sink. I don't know about you guys, but that connection down there doesn't look to be the best, on the, especially on the ground reference there. Hmm. I'm going to resolder that and see if that does anything. See, we're not just looking at a bad ground here. There we go. The no, we're still only getting 0.9 volts. Here's the input, 24. And our ground, zero. Our output is still only 0.9. And the regulator's not getting warm either, so I think this regulator's probably shot. Oh, of course, what I can do is I can use my external power supply here and put 12 volts in to that regulator and see whether this tape deck produces any sound. If I can put external 12 volts in and get sound from it, then I know that that's the problem. And then I can deal with finding a regulator. So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put 12 volts in and see whether I get any sound. So let me just power the unit up. I'm not gonna turn on the 12 volt supply yet. This will actually read, what's cool about this power supply is it'll actually read the power coming off that regulator which is 0.2 volts, right? And uh, then I can turn the power supply on and see whether we get any sound. So I got the thing on, we'll load a tape up, we'll press play, and then I'll just turn on the power to the supply here. Oh, 
Hello? We got sound. That's the problem. We have a pop regulator. That was a nice easy fix. This is where uh, external power supply is coming real handy in that little $20 one that you see there that I built. That's a great little addition to my bench. That little power supply that I got from uh, Banggood. Wonderful little power supply. It's telling me right now that, hey, we're running at 12 volts. We're drawing 0.135 amps and uh, 1.62 watts is all that this circuit is requiring. So what we've got on this is we've got two regulators on this unit. One regulator is probably for the system control, for the motors and the, the logic control that controls the deck. And see, it's further regulated down here as well. There's more regulators on the board. But we've got two, or one might be for the digital circuits and the other one for the analog circuits. But we have two separate 12 volt power supplies and this is the one here, this one popped, this regulator. So I'm gonna replace that regulator and then I've got myself a real nice double auto reverse cassette deck. Okay, I found another regulator. It's gotta take the old one out here first. And again, I'm trying to do this without without removing the, the board if I can. Because uh, this unit can be a bit of a problem to work on. Okay, get the old part out. We'll clean up the board now. And there's the little board ready for the new part, which I've got here. Now this one here, the uh, tab is not isolated, but the tab is gonna be ground anyway, so it shouldn't be an issue. As you can see, if I touch the center tab here, the center terminal, it's grounded. And the center terminal on here is ground. So it shouldn't be a problem without the insulator. Get the new regulator in place and solder it down. See here, the new regulator is nicely soldered in place. Come on, camera, you can do it. There we go. New regulator soldered down here. Don't see any problems with the joints there? So let's uh, we'll just reattach this thing and see what it does. Let's see if we got sound. Power this thing up. Load up a tape. There we go. We got sound. Let's check it out for music. playing. Can't leave this thing play for more than a few seconds. I'm going to find some royalty free stuff. We'll make some recordings on this thing and see how it sounds. Okay I've got the unit set to record. I've already set my recording level on here. I've got, as you'll notice here, I've got a good old Sony. This is a Type 2 high bias tape and I'm setting my recording so that I'm going to record at a peak of about plus three. Uh, I've got my Dolby C noise reduction turned on here because I want the best quality that I can get. And as you can see, this deck here, what does it feature? It's a, uh, I think this has got 8 check. yeah, this has got Dolby C, B and C, and it's got 8 checks Pro. 
So that's the headroom extension. So looks like the Pioneer logo has come off of here, but we know what this is. It's a Pioneer Elite. You can see one of their high-end decks. So to go into record on this, I just press record. And then to record in the forward direction, I would press the forward button. Or to record in the reverse direction, I would press the reverse button because this is auto reverse and auto it'll record both directions, right? And both decks record and play. So let's do a recording on this deck. Then we'll do a recording on that deck. And uh, then we may even try a recording in the reverse direction by flipping the tape over. So I've got some music queued up here. I'm going to play it off my phone. It's royalty free. Got it going in through one of my little Bluetooth adapters that uh, just feeds it out as a, a auxiliary output. So, record. And we'll let this record here. I'm going to let the whole track record. we we'll record a couple different tracks on here and then we'll play it back. I should also point out that the unit has an automatic level control setting here. ALCA, that sets the level automatically. So um, that's like an automatic gain, but of course, Real audio files don't use automatic gain. They set the levels. And I know I'm probably going to hear it from somebody that I'm pushing the tape. But with the uh, HX Pro headroom extension, I should be able to push this tape to plus three without a problem. And I'm using Dolby C noise reduction. Now, when this track finishes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tape out. I'm going to put it in the other deck. I'm going to leave five seconds of blank space between so that the automatic music search can find it. And then we'll record another track on the other uh, deck and uh, see how it searches out music. So, I've recorded on that deck. Let's take the tape out. We'll open up the other deck. I like this off automatic opening and closing of the decks. And we'll set record on this one. And I'll find something else to record here. I'm just gonna cue something up on my uh, player here. Yeah, I think that one will be okay. So we'll hit record or hit play. Or well, we're in record mode. We'll hit play. Start the track playing. Okay, we come up to the end of the track here. Again, I'll leave a five second pause here, and then I'm going to stop it. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to take the tape out. I'm going to turn it over. So we're looking at the B side here, but I'm going to record the A on the B side. So open up this deck. We're going to put this one in here, close it up. And you can you can close that too. You don't have to push the open close button. And this time I'm going to uh, pick another track here from my uh, selection of music. And uh, we'll record in the reverse direction. So I hit record. I hit the reverse button now. That'll reverse it and go into reverse. And now we're recording, but the tape is going backwards. If we look at it, we'll see that the tape, well, you can see it. This has got dark glass. I wish it had lights in there so you can see the tape. That's one thing I'd miss on some tape decks. Some of them had lights in them. But this one does not. But uh, some had a light in behind it. And that's what they should have put on this was the lights. So you can see the tape, because when I would mix tapes, I like to be able to see when the tape is running out. In this case, you gotta use a flashlight. What were they thinking? Especially for the kind of money that they charge for these uh, decks. Okay, that's the third track. I'm gonna do one more track in the reverse direction on the other deck so that I can test it out and make sure that it's working. And then, uh, there we go. Well, got my track queued up here. Hit record, hit reverse, and play. And I've got this one track. This is four tracks so that I can so I can test out the automatic music search to see how well it cues up each track. That's why I'm doing this. Also on the display here, as you notice, there's a time and a counter mode. So in counter mode, it'll just go forward or backwards depending on which way the tape is going. In time, it always counts forward. This is your recording time. So if you're keeping track of, you know, if you know you've got 45 minutes per side, for example, that way you can keep track of your actual running time. So if you're uh, making a recording, if you're recording a tape, you'd know when you're getting close to the end. It's kind of a cool feature on 
Again, I don't know what a lot of the, the uh, functions on this do because uh, I don't have the manual for it, but it looks to be a fairly, uh, a fairly capable deck. Some of the buttons on here I see is flex, blend one and two, whatever that does, parallel record. I would think that, that would make two recordings at the same time. So if you were dubbing a CD, you could make two recordings at the same time. Um, reverse mode, we'll go into that in a minute here. Dolby noise reduction, digital in, that switches to the digital input on the back between analog and digital input. CD sync, I would imagine that that will start it when the CD kicks in. And um, automatic level, copy mode, and copy start. So that would be for making a copy of a tape. Copy mode would probably be one side and or both sides. And then copy start would start one and play back and one and record. But the unique thing about this particular deck, and most of these double decks did not have this, that's recording on both sides. So in theory, you could be recording continually. You could put two 120 minute tapes in here and have four hours of recording. One tape would record both sides and then it would record both sides on the other. That's when you could get a 120 minute tape, which back when cassettes were around, you could. In fact, I've got some really long tapes. I'll show you one of my longest tapes that I've got while this records. So these tapes are tapes you don't see very often. Check this out. Ferrochrome. Okay, this is the Type 3 cassette. Sony was one of the few companies that made these. And this tape here, if we actually look at the tape that's on here, it's actually a different color. If we look at the back side of the tape, I want to get something that's not magnetic here to kind of pull the tape out so you can look at the back side of it here. Because this is quite unique. Look at the back. The back side of the tape is brown. You see the back? But the face of it is black. You notice that? Dual coated tape. It's got ferric oxide, and then on top of it, it's got chromium dioxide. These tapes are these tapes are as rare as hen's teeth to try and find a Type 3 tape. I've got a full box of these tapes that's never been cracked open that I uh, bought when I, back when I was working for Sony. Actually, I bought a couple boxes. I used to use these tapes. I've, I've got I've got hundreds of these tapes in the 60s and 90 minute because the sound quality of these were fantastic. I love the sound quality of these tapes. You could drive the things forever. They had, they had the high frequency response of a chromium dioxide tape, but they had the punch of a ferric oxide tape. So you had really good bass and you had really sizzling high ends. Fantastic tape. And it never really caught on because, well, most decks, I mean, any deck can record this. You recorded it in the type one position and you played it back in the type two position. I think it even says that here. If we look at the fine print up here on this thing, my camera will focus. Okay, position type one, normal type three, ferrochrome. But basically how these tapes worked was you recorded them with a normal bias, and when you played them back, you used the equalization for a high bias tape. That's how you recorded them. So some decks had a type three position and those ones those decks with the type 3 position, they would automatically select normal bias for the record, but uh, 70 microsecond equalization for playback. Another tape that I've got here, which is another quite a rare tape that you won't see too many of these around. You won't see any of these around anymore unless you really hunt for them. But uh, this is a recording I've got here. Oh, I've got some cool stuff on here too. This is a type 4 metal tape, but check the length. It's a 110 minute metal tape. And as far as I know, TDK was the only company that ever made these. But they're really long tape, 110 minutes in a Type 4 metal tape. And of course, metal tape has got the extra detection holes here for the automatic bias on, on tape decks. So you put a metal tape and it has separate switches here. So that's the, the high bias detector and then the switch here, or this hole, is for the metal detection. And then these ones here are the tabs you would break off so that you don't accidentally erase your tape. But I've got stuff recorded on here that goes way back. In fact, if I open this up, I can't play this for more than a couple seconds, but I got some cool stuff on here, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I gotta probably turn the, where's my noise reduction? I don't know what, I don't know if I recorded this in Dolby or DBX. 
It might be in DBX. Nope, sounds like it's in Dolby B. Anyway, I did a lot of my recording in DBX. But, uh, anyway, that's some of my old vintage tapes. Let's uh, take this other tape back here that we've recorded and uh, we'll put it in this deck here and we'll just try the auto search. So if I want to play a recording back, if I want to go back, say two tracks, if I click this and click it twice, I'm in play. So I'm going in forward mode. This should go back two tracks and start playing. I have some visitors visiting me here. There it goes, see it now says number one. And then when it gets back to that track, there we go. And then it'll start playing the recording back. Better be in the right Dolby. I recorded this in Dolby C, so. So there's the in internal workings. You can see it's a belt drive. Belts look to be really easy to change on this too. Or relatively easy, but as you can see, this thing's 20 years old. Belts are still in fine shape. Got some Sony and NEC chips. That's, a, that's, that's the record play amp for one of the decks. Playback amp. HX Pro over here. Circuitry is labeled, right? HX Pro circuit. Regulator, of course, control circuit. HX Pro, so one's gonna be for one deck and one's gonna be for the other. Playback amp. Anyway, that's uh, a look at this tape deck and how to fix the no sound problem with it when it's a bad regulator, which as you saw, it didn't take me long to figure that one out. I didn't even need to use the heavy duty test equipment, just my digital meter, I should say, and my power supply. If you want to support my channel, you can support me either through PayPal or through Patreon, and any donations that I get through the channel goes to support the channel, it allows me to pick up this equipment that I, uh, a lot of the stuff I have to buy, I pick it up used, and I have to pay for it, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but, uh, you know, um, it supports the chat, supporting the channel allows me to continue this uh, channel and cover my operating expenses, etc., and bring you guys more interesting videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you the next one real soon.